welcome to this podcast is Uncalled For, on today's edition, Dave Von Williams. And now, your host for this podcast, Mike Chernevsky. Welcome to today's podcast. Before we get on with uh, today's interview, we have some housekeeping things to take care of. Number one, uh, we will no longer be using free stock music for our uh, stock music for this podcast. And the reason for that is one of our episodes that used music from that website got flagged for copyright infringement. Guys, if you're going to call yourselves freestockmusic.com, it's implied that you're making the music free to use for podcasts, for videos, for movies. I have filed a dispute with YouTube, and hopefully it gets resolved by the time this particular episode is out. But until then, to be on the safe side, I will no longer be using music from uh, that particular website. The Kevin McLeod stuff, even the Kyoto Connection, we've had uh, no problems, but for some reason, Freestock Music giving us problems. Not so happy about that. Also, uh, as of uh, this recording, we record these well in advance. We will also no longer be uploading our podcast to SoundCloud because for some reason, they won't take all of our stuff, and I'm in no position right now to give them money. But as I say at the end of every podcast, if you're in a position to help us, Possibly with stuff like posting the entire podcast series on SoundCloud. I do have a Patreon page. It's patreon.com slash Mike Chernevsky. Patreon.com slash M-I-K-E-C-C-E-R-N-I-E-W-S-K-I. If you want to give money to the podcast to help it out with things like buying a SoundCloud subscription, for example, you're more than welcome to do so, and I will gladly give you credit on this podcast. All right, with all that housekeeping out of the way, let's get to today's uh, discussion so it was inevitable we had to get chess discussion here because my current uh, part-time job is with the kansas city chess club as a chess instructor and doing stuff around uh, the office and today's guest is uh, someone i got to know as a chess instructor he is a really good instructor and we've been talking about doing videos for the chess club too on the KC Chess Club YouTube page. I have instructional videos and stuff. So, without further ado, let's welcome Davon Williams, Coach Davon to some people, to the podcast. So, Davon, welcome to the podcast. Yay. How are you doing? I'm doing good, man. <laughs> uh, All right. Cool. Yeah. Okay. So, so of course, we're here at the uh, KC Chess Club getting ready for a uh, tournament this evening. Mm-hmm. And we're we're both instructors. Well, you're kind of taking a break from instructing, it sounds like. So. Right, right. How'd you get started in uh, chess? Well, I got started in chess my uh, when I was about nine years old. My brother was playing chess a lot. And so, automatically, my, that's my older brother, so I want to be like the older brother. Right. So, I started playing chess, and he started teaching me. Mm-hmm. So, each week, uh, he would bring me to these weekly uh, classes at the library, and I used to just learn from them. And then, on my PlayStation 2, back then, uh-huh. uh, he bought me a, a game called Chess Master. So I was going to school for eight hours, and then when I'll get home, I'll play on this game called Chess Master, and I'll be going through all the lessons and just playing the computers all the time. Mm-hmm. Yep. And so as I did that, I slowly got better. And then there was a tournament the week after I learned how to play chess. So I kind of learned how to play chess in like a week and got like 16th place in the tournament, my first tournament that I played, which was like 100 kids. Mm-hmm. So it was it was very interesting. You know, um, learn how to play chess and learning about forks and tactics and like all in one week. <laughs> all right, cool. Yeah, because yeah, this is a game that uh, you could stay it forever and not really get everything 
Yeah, you know? exactly. And and um, improving and learning about strategies in chess, it, it does take a while. And like, as you're a little kid, you know, you don't really know a lot about strategy and tactics and what you should be doing, your mm -hmm. thought process in a chess game, but I feel like all that comes when you get a little bit older. <laughs> yeah. If you, especially if you don't have a trainer that teaches you. Like, I, I, my whole life I never had a, a trainer, so. Right. Now, of course, one of the things we teach, do teach the kids is, you know, how to open a game. Night up, it's just a castle, yeah. ten moves. Yeah, I, I was taught that by... Uh, uh, me and my brother actually um, didn't know about those principles yet. But we did know that we had to have active pieces. So mm -hmm. we used to like fear and kettle our bishops, both of us. We used to just do that. We didn't know about controlling the center. So we used to just put our G3, bishop G2, and then other bishop going the same way, B3, bishop B2, and then castle, mm -hmm. with whichever side. That's how me and my brother used to play. And our games was always identical. To that always <laughs> lost of course because he he been playing chess he, since he was a kid but uh yeah i've been i lost to him for a whole straight year before i got out wow. <laughs> is there an open that you uh like using yourself yeah um i feel like openings change as you get older and it depends on which job you have <laughs> some openings that you can't play because you don't have the time to study it nowadays i play like easy openings when i was younger i used to play like complicated mm -hmm. queen's pawn poison pawn or nydorf sicilians but nowadays i'm just playing like london's and easy stuff mm -hmm. english and yeah the easy stuff it's sometimes a e4 maybe yeah, <laughs> yeah. my openings look holy if i'm playing white yeah from wikipedia the coal system also known as the Cole Koltanowski system, is a chess opening strategy for white introduced by Belgian Edgar Cole in the 1920s, and further developed by George Koltanowski. This variation of the Queen's Pawn game is characterized by a systematic if modest development of white's minor pieces to support a quick pawn move to the E4 square. It is solid, but inflexible. Cole and Koltanowski each won many tournaments in the 1920s and 1930s. Cole finished ahead of Tardacore, Uwan Rubinstein at various times. The opening had even been referred to as the dreaded Cole system. George Koltanowski, in his book, The Cole System said it offered solid development, combinations, a decent end game, and it gives white good chances of not losing against a stronger player. However, Players like Capablanca and Tal found ways to take the sting out of some of its various lines. Ignoring Black's responses in order to consider White's moves only, the typical plan is as follows, d4, knight f3, e3, bishop d3, castle kingside, rook e1, c3, knight bd2, e4, with White rearranging their move order appropriately. It is a perfectly solid scheme of development, but, inflexibly applied, it cannot offer more than equality against a vigorous black response. It may be a good tool for avoiding book variations, for blitz play, or for forcing opponents to think for themselves early on. These days it is considered totally innocuous, and is rarely seen at master level or above. If I'm black, it depends on how white opens. If it's D4 or something like that, uh, I'll basically do a reverse gully. Yeah, exactly. So. And if it's E5, because I'm so afraid of that form move checkmate, <laughs> <laughs> I will always go Knight F6. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, those are pretty much, uh, like, those are easy openings, but if you, like, know your tactics better than your opponent, and they say, of course, you get equal positions, mm -hmm. but if you're better than your opponent, then you should be able to easily win. So, mm -hmm. that's that's kind of how I feel about that. <laughs> yeah. Yep. And so, that's, that's what I mean, you know, as you're a little kid, you have to, all the time in the world to learn about simple, mm -hmm. complicated openings, but, yeah. Yep. As, as a older. kid, uh, the the uh, just learn the basics, ha learn how the pieces move before you get into anything complicated. But I do think, and feel free to disagree with me on this, opening is the key. Yeah, 
y'all openers the key? Well, sometimes. I feel like openings become the key after a certain rating. When you're beginning chess, I feel like tactics is, is the key. If you don't know uh, about ta Like, I could do, right now, I could do a really ugly opening and still mm -hmm. win a game against 1,200. <laughs> yeah. B but I, I started learning openings when I was a 1,600, though, because... Uh, this is from a lot of grandmasters too, like Josh Pointskin and mm -hmm. a lot of stuff that I studied. But as you become a strong player above 1600, you do have to learn openness to survive in a chess game because if you don't, you will get murdered in yeah. like the first 15 moves. So I do agree with that, like half half. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, yeah. That's what we, well, we tell the kids. The knights have bishop. That's how the grandmasters. Play. Yeah, exactly. I used I like to use the example. It, it was a game between Kasparov and Carlson, about uh, two thousand four, two thousand five, around there. That and then a draw, and and on both sides you see that the knights out, the bishops out, they're both castled. And yeah, you see, and you should see in every grandmaster game that being placed. You know, as a when you're a kid, you you don't really know how serious it is to get your knights and bishops out, and mm -hmm. like you don't know. That's like the main way to win a game is for peace activity, and that's what I try to teach when I was an instructor. Even when I was an assistant, when I was like in seventh grade, I had I was an assistant teaching grown ups to mm -hmm. get out your knights and bishops. But sometimes when you're a kid, you want to um, go the opposite way and play h3, h4. I see that stick. a lot, especially <laughs> especially with the younger kids. They like yeah. to uh, go H three, H four. You suggest something, they want to have fun. Take the rooks <laughs> out early. <laughs> but as as long as everybody's having fun, that's the big thing. Mm -hmm. Just just don't complain if you lose. Yeah. A lot. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so it's it's okay to beat the kids as long, but the the key to it, the key key to that, of course, is. You gotta have a lesson afterwards, saying no, this is what you did wrong, and um, I, I never, this is how you can correct it. Yeah, yeah. I, n I never even play a kid with um, my queen of rooks, especially if they're beginning chess. Yeah. Sometimes I, I play a kid that's beginning chess with like just pawns, you know, because yeah, pawn touchdown. Yeah, because um, it's super important not to just like beat down on their kids. Some kids mm -hmm. can't take it. I can take it. <laughs> <You know? laughs> so, some, some, each person is different. I have a different personality and you just have to, I, I feel like that's the best approach just not to play with all your pieces. Just knights and bishops mm -hmm. only yeah. if you're teaching. Yeah, you could do knights and bishops. You could do pawn touchdown. Just the rooks. Uh, just moving, practice moving the kings around. or Yeah, all sorts of different exercises you could do. Yeah, I, I tend to agree. And yeah. I, I love Pawn Touch Channel with the little kids. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that is a game that I played a lot, a lot. <laughs> I'm trying to get my little niece to play to Pawn Touch Channel. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I got my niece to play it. She, she actually practiced playing chess. She forgot everything now, but when she mm -hmm. was younger, we used to play Pawn Touch Down a lot. What's funny is uh, my niece has only played me on the iPad. No. Oh. And um, yeah, it's it's fun. That's fun. She, she has yet to beat me, but she has yeah. fun doing it. Yeah. So you don't. You don't take off a pawn, or <laughs> no? <laughs> well, it's on the iPad, so you know not much I can do. Excuses. Yeah. No, I'm just <laughs> <laughs> but that's funny. But the funny thing is, I did buy her a chess set for her birthday for yes, you know, her sixth birthday. Yeah. And my brother, her father, has told me hey, they never break it out. Yeah, it's, if you don't have a passion for it, then uh, it's, it's hard. By the to way, said brother can beat me. <laughs> yeah. Some sometimes you need to an, an incentive too. I don't. I don't know. I'm not. I'm not a parent. <laughs> Nor am I. <laughs> so I'm pretty sure it's difficult to get a kid playing chess. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, she's already doing all sorts of other stuff. Eh? As yeah, it is. like if they're doing other stuff, then they're already. Yeah talented because it's not I didn't like, do no other stuff when it's I was not like I see them every day either they live in Oklahoma so you know yeah and we're up here in Kansas City so beautiful Liberty Missouri right here yeah all my life I've been in Kansas City mm -hmm. so yeah there wasn't a lot of chess around when I was growing up too it wasn't probably was but it just mm -hmm. 
didn't know. I yeah. Never, it was never advertised to me. <laughs> right. <laughs> or to my mom. So. I was, I was basically doing other stuff too, and uh, got into chess a little late, really. In fact, yeah, I got, yeah. got into the teaching at the chess club through yeah. Mike. Yeah, and, and actually, like, I was playing chess, playing in tournaments, and then, like, seventh or eighth grade, I, I stopped playing chess in fresh seventh, eighth grade, freshman year. I mm-hmm. stopped playing chess because there was, like, nothing to do, and I, and I got really good, so not that good. Let me stop because <laughs> like, 1,400, just a, which, yeah, there's not a lot of people, uh, average, there's not a lot of people over 1,400 <laughs> right. when I was playing, so, um yeah, I just didn't have any competition. I used to play my um, uncle a lot too. He was a good opponent. But yeah, I stopped playing chess because there was, I didn't, uh, I didn't have tournaments to go to anymore. Didn't have any activities. I played online once in a while, but yeah. it was you can only do so much of that on the board. Chess is where it's at. Like yeah, I agree. Playing on the board against a real person. I agree, and and. I use the chess.com app and I play with real people all the time, but it's but you're right, it is different being face to face with someone versus yep. being online. Yep. Yes. Yeah, being online someone could you know, violate Wheaton's law too. Yeah. And I and I like I like how personal it is on the board mm-hmm. too, you know, like even as a, a you like even as when I was in seventh grade or sixth grade or whatever, I forgot. <laughs> like I would lose to this one guy at a tournament, and like he would always beat me. And I, my incentive was to beat him in the next tournament. Like mm-hmm. I, I loved getting revenge on the chess floor, <laughs> and I liked that personal uh, relationship on, on in a tournament. You know, just wanted to, okay, I can beat maybe I can beat everybody else, but I really want to beat this guy so I can get first place. Yeah. <laughs> So kind of like your rival. Yeah, here, exactly. You know. And so I feel like that's important too to improve in chess. You need you need an incentive to get better instead mm-hmm. of you just beating everybody, thinking that you know everything. Yeah, and yeah, that clearly did it. That's one of the things that annoys me. Again, using the online first mm-hmm. back back first. Yeah, you, you play when they somebody, take their queen out too early. Yeah, I mean, you, that's you play somebody online. You might offer a rematch. They they won't accept the rematch. Okay. But, uh, yeah, it's just different. Even though I like just playing chess at home, it's just different on the screen than on the chess board. I mm-hmm. feel like I play better more on the actual board than on a 2D screen. Right. But that's that's a, another conversation. Yeah. <laughs> Each individual is different. Yeah. <laughs> and, of course, and, of course, your wife is now uh, uh, helping us uh, teach classes. Yeah, and yeah, she's and I will say she's getting better. Yeah, she plays chess each night. Um, mm-hmm. she, yeah, she... she did not like chess when we first got <laughs> but yeah she became an instructor she started playing chess a lot mm-hmm. yeah she a lot of people think that they can't learn how to play chess or that it's boring and it's kind of like it's more of they don't think that they're smart enough to play chess which is a big one mm-hmm. and I just don't think that is true like <laughs> at all like I can't swim but I know how to play chess yeah. at, at a really good level so <laughs> I mean it's it's just a talent thing I, and I feel like everybody can learn how to move the pieces mm-hmm. like yeah. just like any other game you, we have to learn like Sudoku or um, which I, my, the rules are still kind of fuzzy in my head on how to play Sudoku <laughs> but, <laughs> but just that's just, more of that's a puzzle than it is a game yeah, so. yeah exactly or or let me think of it. So it's like Catan? Uh, yeah, so, some other game. I don't know. Chinese checkers? What, what? Chinese checkers. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There, there's another. There's a whole bunch of other games. Othello? Yeah. Parcheesi? Yeah. If, if you play games a lot, you can, you can play chess. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I promise. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. That's again. That's how I got in you know, to I, being teachers. Uh, board games at uh, board game nights, and that's yeah. where I met Mike. And he told me about doing the chess yeah, club. And, and yeah, and it's really fun once you learn how to mm-hmm. learn how to play, learn the point and the purpose of the game, um, the history too of chess. It's, yeah, it's really. I think it's really important. Mm-hmm. to learn how to play that. Yeah, a good example of the history of the game that we do teach is uh, the En Passant move. From Wikipedia. En Passant, from the French for in passing, is a move in chess. 
It is a special pawn capture that can only occur immediately after a pawn makes a move of two squares from its starting square, and when it could have been captured by an enemy pawn had it advanced only one square. The opponent captures the just moved pawn as it passes through the first square. The result is the same as if the pawn had advanced only one square and the enemy pawn had captured it normally. The unpassant capture must be made on the very next turn or the right to do so is lost. Like any other move, if a non-passant capture is the only legal move available, it must be played. Unpassant capture is a common theme in chess compositions. The unpassant capture rule was added in the 15th century when the rule that gave pawns an initial double step move was introduced. It prevents a pawn from using the two square advance to pass an adjacent enemy pawn without the risk of being captured. And that move is uh, a uh, remnant of the old move where pawns can only move one space, period. Yeah. yeah. Chess, is, <laughs> chess is so modernized nowadays. And um, yeah, back in older times, uh, oh man. They, they thought that they have to move the king twice just to castle. I mean, mm -hmm. I would not want to play chess back then. That's they made it simple. They made it more simpler for us to play chess more easily nowadays. Mm -hmm. And so we should definitely appreciate that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Are there any grandmasters that you would suggest uh, that uh, students, uh, particularly advanced students, uh, take a look at their games? Um. Well. Everybody have said this, but uh, I'll say it again. Study the classics. Mm -hmm. Study the the first grandmasters, the first world champions. Bobby Fischer, Kasparov, study all mm -hmm. of them. Um, it's not like, you probably have seen the game a thousand times, but it's so important pattern recognition mm -hmm. you know, on the chessboard. Like, um, it's kind of like, backing up a trailer if you did it a hundred times or more than that then you're gonna just get it easily or if you did a rubik's cube if you keep on doing it then you're gonna get it easier and easier mm -hmm. that's how chess is if you see patterns a lot and you just keep on looking at grandmaster games then that's how you really become a, a very strong player and that's how when you see these um grandmasters uh hakaru nakamura he's up here playing one minute mm -hmm. I, and i was just seeing him playing a 1400 to the other day and he just like pre-moved like 10 moves <laughs> he was obviously already wanting to do that but he yeah they, they, especially in, in our day now there's like super grandmasters that are just better than regular grandmasters which is just amazing magnus yeah exactly and magnus is just a whole on a whole nother level his classical rating right now is like 2874 and the second best is 2818 Carolina which is yeah Carolina and that's a big get <laughs> like if it's more than 50 points then that's a big get mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's it, that's insane too you know he's just especially talented you have to be born with the gift to be that talented yeah <laughs> yeah I'm definitely never <laughs> no I don't yeah. think either of us I, will yeah, so exactly probably most in of fact them. I think Magnus and Carolina would probably clean the floor with us yeah yeah yeah, all those super grandmasters or grand, mm -hmm. even becoming a grandmaster is really, really hard and a lot of dedication and in, into chess, getting GM norms, and that's just very interesting. Yeah, but again, on pattern recognition, you have to have muscle memory in chess to be able to um, play a good game because sometimes it's just like a flash and moves just comes at you, and you're like, oh, okay, that's checkmate in three. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and once you do that all the time, and like, don't just look at a Grandmaster game. Actually understand what they're doing on the board, each move, mm -hmm. the purpose of it, uh, their thought process. Um, if you do that and um, study these classic games, um, you would be a very strong player because everybody has did it. Everybody has studied the classics <laughs> once, um, once in their time. Yeah. Know? Once again, thanks to Coach Davon for sitting down with me for a few minutes before the uh, tournament started. Davon actually did pretty well that night. Uh, me, I got thrown in the last 
second and lost every single game that night. So, and I know I haven't been thanking my, I guess, enough on the podcast uh, lately, but I'm going to do it right now. Yeah, thank, thanks to Dave on and all the guests I've had so far. So ways you can help the podcast, of course, tell friends about it. Uh, subscribe to us on iTunes, Google Play, pretty much anywhere you can download podcasts, except for SoundCloud. Check out our blog, uncalledfor.home.blog. Check our Facebook page, facebook.com slash uncalledforpodcast. And if you want to help us financially, just five bucks at patreon.com slash mikechernfc. Patreon.com slash M-I-K-E-C-C-E-R-N-I-E-W-S-K-I. Who knows, maybe we'll return to SoundCloud and I'll be able to afford the uh, subscription. So with all that said, have a great day and we look forward to the next podcast. This podcast is Uncalled For is hosted, produced, and edited by Mike Chernefsky. Opening music is Iron Bacon by Kevin McLeod at Incompetech.com. Licensed under Creative Commons by Attribution 3.0 License. Outro music is, Divertiment OK 131 by Kevin McLeod at Incompetech.com. Licensed under Creative Commons, by Attribution 4.0 License. Additional music included Morocco Sting by Kevin McLeod at Incompetech.com. Licensed under Creative Commons by Attribution 3.0 License. And Cello Suite No. 1 in G, Prelude by Kevin McLeod at Incompetech.com. Licensed under Creative Commons, by Attribution 4.0 License. If you would like to support this podcast or any of Mike's other creative endeavors, please consider making a donation at patreon.com slash mikechernefsky. That's M-I-K-E-C-Z-E-R-N-I-E-W-S-K-I. Donations over $5 will receive a special thanks on a future podcast. Thank you so much for listening. We will see you next time.